Dr. Doom's Guide to the Universe, Special Rules for the Burial of Christian Insects. Coon skin and alligator hide. Make a pair of jump boots just the right size. Shine them up, lace them up, put them on your feet. A good pair of jump boots can't be beat. In processing goes like a flash bang grenade. By the time I open my eyes, my hair is gone, my clothes are stripped from me, and my freedom is traded for 10 sunny weeks of healthy eating and exercise at the all-expenses-paid resort known as basic training. We load into cattle cars and rumble across the army post. We stand like spoons, and every bone-crushing, pelvic-thumping, elbow-gouging mile is griping and groaning until we sound like the cattle the truck was meant for. Human cattle, ready for slaughter. I will not give up. I will not allow them to change me. I am a lover, not a fighter. When we arrive, we file out and find our faces eating concrete. We learn the push-up. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It's an important exercise. One that we'll come to love and hate. It makes us stronger. It makes us weaker. It gives us a breather from doing other things. It's our entrance into the chow hall. It's our exit to the day. That which must be done prior to us embracing the hard wool heaven of our beds. It's our benevolent mistress, who we imagine beneath us. It's our savage master, who we imagine sitting atop us. We push, we push, we push, we push until our arms wiggle like Chinese noodles and our legs tremble like a taxi cab chihuahua head. Our faces mash into the concrete when we're done. We like the feeling of a cool rock grating against our skin. We love the grit. We love the dirt. We love anything that isn't the push-up. Give me liberty or give me death were the last most famous words of Nathaniel Hale before he was hung. If he'd been threatened with a lifetime of push-ups, he would have said, fuck it, and moved on. Patriotism has its limits. They say that in the army, the coffee's mighty fine. It looks like muddy water and tastes like turpentine. Oh, Lord, I want to go, but they won't let me go. Oh, Lord, I want to go. Oh, 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 hey. They say that in the army, the chow is mighty fine. A chicken jumped off the table and started marking time. Oh, Lord, I want to go, but they won't let me go. Oh, Lord, I want to go home. Hey! Then we meet Dr. Doom. His real name is Drill Sergeant Bloom, but everyone calls him Dr. Doom. He's a too tall, lean, mean African-American fight machine with more patches than any three drill sergeants. Airborne, air assault, alpine training, jungle training, pathfinder, combat infantry badge, halo, scuba, ranger, shit. He has them all. They say he killed hundreds of Vietnam. They say he eats snakes and shits cowboy boots. They say he's the hardest drill in the post and you're fucked if you have him. And I'm fucked. Sitting on a mountaintop beating my drum. Beat so hard that the MPs come. MP, MP, don't arrest me. Arrest that sergeant behind the tree. He stole whiskey, he stole wine. But all we do is double time. Hell yeah. I run hard with the rest of the platoon. We're Delta 2-4. We've been together for a week. We sweat, we stink, we still troop over each other. Up the hill, down the hill. The sand is so fucking deep. The air is so fucking hot. Flies eat us at every breath. Dr. Doom. What does he do? He makes us sing. All the time we sing. He calls him Jody Calls. Jody's the guy fucking our girl back home and we're supposed to be motivated to run with songs of her having spectacular sex with a fucktard two chicken to join the army? Are you serious? The cadence of the calls are supposed to keep us in step. They're supposed to teach us things, besides how awful we miss our girls, we miss our life. Dr. Doom calls the cadence, and we scream it back at him. It's our only defiance. It's the only way we can hate without getting into trouble. One mile, no sweat. Two miles, better yet. Three miles, think about it. Four miles, thought about it. Five miles, feeling good, like I should. In my legs, in my hands. In my chest, feeling good, super troop. He has this idea that we'll become a cohesive unit that will work and play together. This is the new army. They have no idea that we were born individuals. We're not like they used to be. This is no television show where we are all the same. We are our own people. The black boys, the white kids, the Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans, even the Guatemalans and Filipinos. We are individuals and we group together. Whites with whites, blacks with blacks, and, and so on. Fucking spick, wetback, slat-eyed, gringo, nigger bastards, all of us. We're individuals and we try to maintain our identities. I'm me first and Delta 2 for second. And don't ever fucking doubt it. Two old ladies lying in bed. One reached over, respect the other side of the head. I want to be an airborne ranger. Live the life of sex in danger. Ooh, ah, sex and danger. We run. We do push-ups. 
This is what it means to be a soldier. I can see it now on the battlefield. We run towards the enemy, then we do push-ups. No one laughs because they're doing it too. It's the evolution of warfare. We become a caricature, a long-lost icon. We've forgotten we were forced to do murder. We have become masters of our own humiliation. We, the puking, cursing, crappy lot of us who finish all the runs and do all the fucking push-ups. Dr. Doom is so tall and he takes long strides. He calls it a range walk. We try and mimic him, but we have to run to keep up. He's fucking inhuman. He doesn't heave. He doesn't retch. He barely even sweats. They say he was in Vietnam, but he won't talk about it. Alphabet tried to ask him one day at mail call, and Low crawled around the barracks for his trouble. So, so none of us ask him. Still, he has a look about him. Something in the way he stares at the sky scares me. It's as if he's seen something and has a special relationship with God. They can look at each other like old friends, a nod carrying a thousand words. Or maybe it's not old friends. Maybe it's enemies. A yellow bird with a yellow bill was sitting on my windowsill. A yellow bird with a yellow bill was sitting on my windowsill. I lured him in with a piece of bread. I lured him in with a piece of bread. I lured him in with a piece of bread. And then I smashed his fucking head. Saturday mornings finds us standing in ranks in the middle of the fog-hugged parade field. Bayonets affixed to the ends of our rifles glisten wetly in the human air. I feel like a soldier in the Civil War, only I don't know which side I'm on. We begin bayoneting drills. Such a strange pairing of words I never thought I'd use. Bayonet drills? We run screaming as we impale an invisible enemy. We pull the bayonet out and advance once more. We parry and block and stab. I imagine my enemy a rifle's length away and am at first a little scared. But the more I sweat and scream and stab, the more confident I become. Soon I find myself forgetting that the rifle can deliver death at 300 yards and treat it only as a bayonet delivery mechanism. Hey ho, diddly bop. I wish I was back on the block. With my rifle in my hand, I'm going to be a killing man. They put saltpeter in our food. They do it to keep us from masturbating. Not that I've thought of doing it at the barracks filled with other men. But I can't remember the last time I went without dreaming of Cheryl Ladder, Farrah Fawcett, Wiggly, naked and ready before me. So it has to be the saltpeter. Saltpeter is one of the working ingredients in gunpowder, as it turns out. Alphabet, whose real name is some incomprehensible Armenian combination of letters, uh, says it was Napoleon who first added it to his army's food stores to keep them from getting randy during their retreats. Probably why they fucking lost, bunch of limp dick frogs. The second Sunday I draw KP duty. I'm in the kitchen cleaning pots and pans when I see a girl, not an imaginary girl or a girl in a magazine, but a real-life, freshly minted army girl wearing clothes just like me and her hair too short to be pretty. Still, she has breasts. Normally, my mind would be doing mental gymnastics as it defies and contortions for her to fit into. But today, all I can do is stare at her, wondering what to do, knowing that I should know what to do and be willing to do anything, including sneaking a quickie in the mop closet. So instead of coming on, I merely wave, then return to washing. What's wrong with me? Fucking Napoleon Salpy to turn me into a Mormon tabernacle choir. It's Dr. Doom's fault, too. He's desensitized us through song. I realize that. I can feel it happening. Sometimes we sing a cadence, and I cringe a little bit inside when I hear the words. I got a mom. I got a sister. I got a grandmother. Sure, I have insane images of naked movie stars running through my mind and doing crazy things with my lean, hard military body. But to scream some of the cadences we scream is like turning my braid inside out to show God, the universe, and everyone how fucked up I am on the inside and how fast they should lock me up. Up to up the monkey from the coconut grove. He was a mean motherfucker. You could tell by his clothes. Wore a two-button ditty and a three-button stitch. Was a loud motherfucking son of a bitch. He lined a hundred women up against the wall. And bet anyone he could fuck them all. He fucked 98 till his balls turned blue. He backed off, jacked off, and fucked the other two. Even knowing how wrong it is to laugh, we do. Dr. Doom sings Cadence. We sing it back at him. I sing at the top of my lungs. You realize that our multiple voices have become one. I can't hear black, white, Hispanic, or Asian. I can't hear northern or southern or eastern seaboard. I can't hear educated or uneducated. All I hear is a song that begins to cement us as a unit. Delta 2-4. It's Children of the Corn, Son of Sam, and Lord of the Flies all baked up into one fucked up camouflage pie. I have these images of napalm sticking to kids, and it doesn't make me sick. I think about hand-grenade-exploded bodies, and I ask to pass the gravy. 
I dream about bullets stitching across the fronts of men like me in different colored uniforms as I dress myself every morning. We joke about dead gooks caught in the wire. We laugh about dead ruskies pickled in homemade transmission hoops. We giggle about blood and guts like they're animated characters in Saturday morning cartoons. What used to bother me no longer bothers me. When I get to heaven, St. Peter's going to say, How do you earn your living? How do you earn your pay? And I'll reply with a whole lot of anger. I made my living as an airborne ranger. Blood and guts and sex and danger. Living the life of an airborne ranger. When I get to hell, Satan's gonna say, How'd you earn your living? How'd you earn your pay? And I'll reply with the boot in his face. Sending gooks and hotties to this place. And that bothers me. We fight a lot. It's easier now to solve problems to our fists than it is to talk about them. Man, Freddy Spaghetti is the shortest of us all, and he has a temper relative to his stature. He's acting platoon guide and trying to lead us in drill and ceremonies, but we are ready for him. Whenever he says right, we go left. Whenever he says left, we go right. He's always turning opposite our direction. By the time we're finished, he's sputtering and fuming. His eyes glow the same color as the red that's lasted around his neck. We don't laugh out loud because we know Dr. Doom is watching. Finally, Taco Lopez can't contain himself. Delivered a choking Spanish litany of Manfredi's ancestors, Lopez bends over and hugs his crapping stomach. Manfredi becomes an Italian-made Spanish-seeking missile. He shoots across the 10-foot space. He latches onto Lopez's neck and begins to choke the Mexican out. Not a single one of us breaks rank, and it's with a proud twitch of the eyes that Dr. Doom range walks over and saves Lopez, noting ever so slightly that we elevate ourselves in his eyes through our stalwart professionalism. If I should die in the low-drop zone, Box me up and ship me home. Pin those medals upon my chest. Tell my mama that I did my best. Goldstein's going to take the worst of our wrath. I don't know if it's because he's Jewish, which never bothered me, but pisses me off now for some reason. Or because we have no focus for our newly acquired advanced degrees in violence. Or because he caused us to lose our movie privilege by lousing up our Saturday night inspection. But even Spastic Sorensen is mad at him this night. We get Goldstein in the shower. We're naked just like him. He screams when he sees us and tries to cover the patch of red hair in his crotch. It looks oddly like blood on his otherwise hairless body. But he shouldn't have worried about that. We might be naked, but this has nothing to do with sex. This is pure violence. We kick him down. His screams fall weakly, soon overpowered by the static kiss of the water coming from the showers. The water turns first pink, then yellow as he baptizes him with three dozen streams of indignation. He lays huddled amidst his blood and our urine on the floor before Dr. Doom comes and gets him. Goldstein spends the night in the, in the Troop Medical Clinic. He comes back the next morning. He looks normal, but something is broken on the inside. Something in his brain. You can see it in the way he looks at us, the way he twitches. He begins talking to himself. He sneers at the world before where he held it in awe. He laughs at things we don't even dare laugh at. The end comes when he finally giggles at Dr. Doom. Swift. Brutal. Final. And it happens like this. Dr. Doom instructs Vance and Schmidt on the correct way to dispose of the bodies of all the ants they destroyed while wrestling atop an anthill. Not that anyone knows how to bury an ant, especially while respecting the tiny Hymenopterans' religious beliefs. But using a box of kitchen mats, as the two privates begin to create tiny graves marking each of the cross because these ants were Christian ants. We know this because Dr. Doom tells us so. And as he observes the services of the deceased, the first giggle escapes Goldstein's lips. A stern gaze attempts to impale the impertinent Jewish private, but he somehow survives. The giggle evolves into a cackle, transforming Goldstein into a parody of Faustus, ignorant to the, to the divine justice that is about to be levied on his hunching and weeping form. The universe comes to a screeching halt as Dr. Doom crashes the hastily constructed Hymen of Terra graveyard. We never see Goldstein again, but he remains with us forever. Life goes on. We run. We do more push-ups. We're becoming something new, something different. During visitation day, we parade around. Our chests are pumped. Our chins are out. Grim smiles cut our chiseled features. We feel like gods of war. Everyone is all smiles. Our parents, our girls, everyone is proud of us. Then we sing the vegetable song.
My girl's a vegetable, she lives in a hospital, and I would do anything to keep her alive. She's got no arms or legs, she gets by on hooks and pegs, and I would do anything to keep her alive. It's only out of the corner of my eye that I can see the effect of our transition 16 verses later. We think nothing of it. We've sung it a thousand times. They're just words that rhyme, right? They don't really mean anything, right? But our parents don't know that. Our girls don't know that. They see us laughing to Marcy and singing about mutilated girls and they don't understand. I try to come up with an explanation for later, but I don't understand it either. It's now who we are. We do hop twos for a few yards before we break into one last cadence. Mama, mama, can't you see what the army's done to me? They took away my faded jeans and now I'm wearing army greens. They put me in a barber's chair, spun me around, I had no hair. Mama, mama, can't you see what the army's done to me? I used to drive a Cadillac, and now I pack it on my back. I used to date a beauty queen, and now I hug my M16. Mama, mama, can't you see what the army's done to me? Then we pass in review. I'm a soldier now. I'm ready for anything. I'm what you made me to be. I see with the need to prove it. Thank you, Dr. Doom. Thank you so fucking much. Look out, world. Here I come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today is the day that can make me cry Cause I'm never gonna love again Bag that's falling, all it is calling the next I'm gonna be Iran A bomb over here and a bomb there Couldn't care less about the shot of Iran The drought's coming soon, better change your tune But don't be telling me you don't understand Oh, you understand When I get the hell done Son, until you wake, you're going to war Make sure you don't miss all the terrorists When friendly fire's coming through your back door in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies oh, man. have prevailed. I said, fuck! Fuck the war! Say the hey, ho, kiddly bop bop, wish fuck I was... the war! Ooh, fuck! Fuck! The what are we fighting for? New tactics and precision weapons we can achieve military objectives without directing violence. My girl's a vegetable, she lives in a hospital, and I will do anything to keep her alive. She's got no arms or legs, she can buy on those two legs, and I will do anything to keep her alive. This is because I have this on my face and it won't come off.